Hey everybody, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. We are continuing with our dungeon crawl of the Mega Dungeon of the Halls of Arden Vool by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Gavin Norman, Necrotic Gnome himself. I am John, I am the referee for the evening, and going around the horn we have... I'm Mike, I play Goran the Dwarf, also known as Halfling Slayer. David, David would normally be with us, he is dead to us however tonight, hopefully he'll be back next time. Uh, one can hope. Uh, I am Matt. I play Avaricius, the left hand of Lysion, level five cleric, and uh, spider uh, fleer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, me too. Discretion is the better part of valor. True statement. Uh, I am Ted, and I play Mortus J. Gobliano, most excellent goblin, and I apologize for the little powder outage last week. That was... <laughs> A really big bummer for me to <laughs> just watch the whole house go dark. No more game. Brutal. Very sad. Brutal. It was brutal. Yeah, but uh, it, they they ended up. Uh, it was quite quite an episode last time. Um, they discovered yeah. that the darlings had basically been eliminated by the goblins who had decided to take advantage <laughs> of the weak position and uh, just moved right into that halfling territory. Can I just say, whoops? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> that was a big oopsie. Yeah. I think it's a good thing, sort of, but it not not really how that was supposed to play out. But well, not actually a surprise either. In the macro ecology of the dungeon, uh, and your ability to access that general area, it's still a net positive, right? Like it could have been better. It probably would have been a lot better if the darlings had been there instead of the goblins, but the goblins are nowhere near as um, exploitative as 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 the Plumthorn gang, right? And they're—I so. mean—they're bastards, but right now, at least, they're bastards that like us. Yes, there are bastards. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And okay. you do have more. You have more to act as sort of a go-between. Yeah, um, but for how long? This is Ted we're talking about. Right. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the, <laughs> oh, you have little faith. The big loss. The honor too. of goblins is eternal <laughs> it's a different sort of goblin down here though as Moore has discovered yeah, um, it is quite, a very different sort of goblin don't share the same value system as the imperial goblins um no so the uh what was i gonna say they yeah they they like they like mort and because they think mort's the boss um they like the pcs as well um you did lose your biggest um point of leverage which was plumthorn himself which they now have Mm. Uh, but they're still willing to, and they still want you to talk to Killick, at least the big boss of the Wet Caves, uh, who is apparently down below. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, you went back to the end of the Broken Head, explained how things are, how it shook out, all that sort of good stuff. It is um, the 20th of Ligarios right now. It's about 7 p.m. You are back at the end of the Broken Head. Um, Yost is the lone surviving member of the Dalton's Darlings and now is a full-fledged member of the AV Club. He is uh, Mort's retainer. Um, so we have three of our four PCs actually have retainers now. Mort has Yost, Avaricios has Njal Okart, and Gorand has Samantha the Red. Uh, only Onweir has does not have one. Onweir used to have one. He had Yonwen, who was ripped shredded. Yes. I think the the plan is for Sam to actually be on Weir's retainer because my right? charisma is so bad. She'll stab us in the back while we're sleeping. And <laughs> she'll be like, I'm not working for that dwarf. He sucks. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know, though. We'll, well, I guess David and I will talk about that later. So they you lost mule. You lost your mule to the spiders. Yup. Um, and you gave up what was on the mule to the goblins. Yup. Yeah, right. Um, you have... Your originally stated goal was that you were going to wait for Tresty to arrive. You had sent word from the inn back to Gosterwick that Tresty mm-hmm. should come because you're about to make your delve to, to go retrieve the spell book or find Isocritus or whatever. Um, so we had determined that Tresty, uh, if she's not held up would mo- and accepts your offer, would most likely arrive tomorrow in the late afternoon, early evening. Right. So it's right. seven. it's 7 p.m. on the 20th right now she should arrive a little bit less than 24 hours from now on the next day on the 21st. Um, So, yeah. So uh, you had um, more, you warned them about Garalad uh, and they did, they, they hadn't never heard of the man, although they did not like the goblins. So they, you do have, you did give them that, right? Like you gave them that and they, they do feel a little bit of 
at least bottleneck does a little bit of debt towards you, a, gr a gratitude for that. So you have that little bit of leverage. Um, and yeah, that's basically where things stand. We learned uh, off time that Laryl's sack, which was the artifact of Laryl one eye, one of the artifacts, um, that yes, it is indeed a bag of holding. Yes, indeed does mimic a, a robe of mundane items as well. But uh, the limiter on that, and this is an important one for viewers to understand as well, because it is a very powerful item, um, is that the moment that anything is placed into it, it must be carried into hands. So that's the big like, oh shit. Um, but that's yeah. a pretty darn good limiter. Um, yeah, so I think that's where we're at. We're, we're at the end of the broken head. The sun is set. You've explained mm -hmm. the situation to Kronos and Estelle. Um, yeah, and what do you do? Well, I, I don't think we've explained the uh, the second change in management. Mm. I think we explained the, the first one. <laughs> no, we yeah. did. No, we did. We definitely did. The goblin one? No, yeah, we didn't no, explain we did. that. We absolutely did. Yeah, I think you. I thought. I thought you. We did. We were oh, okay. We had, well, maybe cool just, uh, yeah, we had the whole conversation with them, and they actually, like, to our surprise, didn't seem overly upset. They were like, "Well, goblins are going to do what goblins are going to do," you know. <laughs> and we were kind of like, "Oh, oh, that's right." And okay. then they, Cronus was also saying, um, "Not that he wanted to put ideas in your head, but uh, you know, if if you want, if you guys wanted to step in and and take control of that area, then of course they could work out something, you know, a, a deal with you." Yeah, uh, not me, man. I'm not doing it. I don't know. I don't really want to kill that many goblins. No, no, no. We got we got our own spot, man. Remember that the uh, that secret uh, entrance that uh, we checked out, and then it's just like stuffed on the side, waiting for us. Well, and also we have the entrance for Isocritus, right? And that was what those where those spiders came from that ate our donkey. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. How much is uh, Cronus going to bang us out for that donkey being eaten by those spiders? Oh, did you uh, did you buy the donkey from him? No, we, we borrowed no. it. You borrowed it, yeah, yeah. That's no, no, wait, John, wait, wait, wait. We totally paid for it. We we already paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. he, he showed us the tents in the side and said, "No, I said this is a buyer beware." Yeah. <laughs> Notably, there was there was no security deposit, so I think right. we're okay. Yeah, yeah, you probably would have to. You he, he wouldn't get mean about it, but he does. You know, he lost a donkey. You know yeah. what? And in, 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 in good faith, you know what? Like he looks over our stuff and we're gone, you know, that, that, that's fair enough to bring, re, you know, compensate for. Uh, yeah. Uh, All right, folks. So, so this Apple is a too. very OSC thing where we're extremely concerned about the cost of a donkey to an innkeeper. No, it's easy. It's I, got, I, I got the number right now. He's, he's going to ask you for 30 gold pieces for in recompense. 30 gold pieces. <laughs> Chronos, <laughs> you're killing me, man. You're killing me. <laughs> that donkey was used, man. It was on his last legs, man. Come on. <laughs> it couldn't hear. One of its hooves was lame. It's actually the not even like that. Were, the the spiders were barely even interested in that donkey. It was so dry. <laughs> it's, a, it's not even like a, his normal rate. Like normally, Chronos upcharges for everything, you know, but he's actually asking for the going rate for a mule. Oh, yeah. 30 for this. You must be mad. There you go. Um, I'll mark it down. Well, here, let me take it off the party funds. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's that a does cry bring a question of, uh, Matt brought up, which is we've got some stuff we brought up, books and things that we have to decide whether we want to leave them here or encumber well, we, ourselves. I mean, we we and, have a we have a day. We should at least read some of them. I I was curious. Like one of those books was about uh, arch villains of uh, something or other. Indeed. So one you of have them um, is, yeah. One is about poisons, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And one there was another one about his. Now I'm just going off memory. History or something. The Emperors of Arcantos, Volume One. Um, oh, yeah. Those are the three I've that you the found in Plumthorne's chest, right? In his locked chest, but um, there was also a, a uh, lexicon of Mithric that you had found on uh, Blondveg. By Larcinius the Exarch. Uh, that was the great, wait, Great Villains of Arcantos by Larcinius the Exarch. Thorson Poisons and Their Cures, Emperor of Arcantos, Volume 1, and the Lexicon of Mithric. Yeah. Four books. That's it. Uh, would you like to peruse those books at night, a little nighttime reading? I mean, we have uh, we have yeah. the night, we have the day until Tresty gets here. Why not? Sure. So Let's read read you, it up. You curl up by the fire, waiting for Tresty. 
kicking it back, ruminating on your past experiences. Um, and let's see, uh, great villains of Arcantos. Now, uh, this is part four, of course, you understand. Everyone knows. Larcinius the Exarch yeah. was the subject of part four. Um, so this is a uh, another great Richard Barton slash Gygaxian word, a lacrimose account. Ooh. Yes. Which I, I think <laughs> oh, means nice. like makes you cry or melancholy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's right? very yeah. sad. Yeah. 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 Uh, a lacrimose account of the cowardice and weakness of uh, Larcinius, who was the exarch, uh, Ar exarch of Arcturus, which is your exarchate Avaricios to the south, um, at the okay. time of the Archontian retreat some 1,175 years ago. Um, this is around the time when the cataclysm or whatever it was happened, you know, like the great, the great uh, ruin of Arden Vool uh, was also in, in time with this um, uh, retreat. Uh, in uh, the, the author, by the way, is Yang of Narcelion, and Yang's telling Larcinius's personal and moral failings outlined in an extensive list of specific examples prevented the empire from retaining its hold on this exarchate. Um, the book was widely seen by readers as an attempt to rehabilitate Yang's reputation after the disastrous reception of his work on Arthu Arthuinuus, who was uh, the subject of part three, <laughs> the earlier work. Um, uh, because it is far more simplistic in its style and criticism than the first three, some sages believe that the original Yang cannot be the real author. So that's what, that's what's known about this book. Um, it's kind of an interesting take because it's it's just it's part four yet it doesn't seem to match up with the earlier ones like in the style and everything like that huh. so there you go um who do we have uh thorkin po poisons and their cures right yep um oh well, there's no way we're getting that away from on so this is a very valuable tome it provides recipes for 93 different poisons divided into four categories, contact, penetrating, ingested, and thrown. Um, the majority of the poisons are non-lethal, but 26 of them are highly potent and thus are also highly proscribed. Um, the text also provides alleged antidote formula for all but seven of the most lethal poisons. The author is, of course, for obvious reasons, anonymous. That's um, really cool. We should definitely not sell that. John, mm -hmm. So, John, does that basically give us the ability to make these poisons it, after after intense study? Yes, you could. Uh, you, like you, John, I mean, you know, you would have the recipes. You'd have to still find the ingredients, stuff like that. But like the knowledge would be there for you. Yeah, flipping through those pages is mortality in the book. It is not actually. Ooh. Yeah, if you spend some time, you do see that there are like there are numerous, like a lot of the 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 bases, um, the foundations of the poisons are from arachnids and insects. Um, so it does stand to reason that um, there's like it, the, the why this was found in Plum Thorn's secret chest was it fairly obvious that okay. Blondvig probably used it as a basis for knowledge, but uh, apparently like created his own his own using this knowledge. Um, That's crazy. So you guys this, like we have to assume that they were actually um, using the spiders nearby, right? Seems reasonable to make that jump yeah i mean uh, well i mean we have so, a sample of poison from one of the the chasm spiders mm -hmm. yep i thought i thought that i uh, for, forgive me I th i'm kind of remembering that this uh, mortality seems to be based on the poison of a different spider or was it the chasm spiders or do we even know you have no i don't idea. think we know you don't know but you do know that there was in some of the broken beakers and stuff like that when you first entered in there was like there they were filled with spider venom of some sort right so you just don't i mean you were never able to determine yeah. what that was okay right. um, lastly um is the emperors of our contos volume one um, this book offers capsule biographies of the first 275 emperors of our contos ranging from constans the first to marcion the sixth um, each emperor gets only two paragraphs of space, um, and the focus is mostly on genealogy and military affairs, so it's not that exciting. Um, the author was one Musius the Lesser. Um, so that one's not too exciting. Flip, flipping through that, mm -hmm. or the or the Yang's book, do you know, just flipping through, looking at pictures, et cetera, et cetera, do, you, do we see anything that like, you know, oh, that looks like 
an, a piece of iconography we saw in Ardenvul, or that's the same mural we saw on that wall, or, um, you know, a yep. name, initials that matches up with something we've seen. Uh, no, actually not. Uh, the, some of the stylings are similar, um, but most of the precincts that you've been in that are Arkantian are heavily religious in nature, right? Right. The Thoth priesthood. Um, you've seen very little that actually indicates like um, a political bent, you know, or, or, or representations right. of military hierarchy at the time. Your one link to that was actually Anaximander, who was part of Adrianic's legion. Right. That was my next question. Yeah. Now is that he was mentioned at all. <laughs> uh, he is not. So, uh, uh, let's see. No. Yeah. Cause the emperor's Arcantos was the first 275. That was a long time ago. Adrianic was fairly recent. He was actually, um, is it 275? No. Uh, 234 years ago was Adrianic's expedition to Ardenbull. Okay. And that was to, to reclaim it. However, it was, um, uh, almost, it was about 1200 years ago that the Arcandians were basically, um, evacuated from Martin Bull during the great retreat. So it was a long time ago. Now I was, I, there was a place I'm trying to place where it was. We, there was a room or something where there was a big list of emperors listed out. Am in the I, hall of heroes or something like that. Right maybe those were, i can't and, remember those those statues that were all facing away those were all like um mythic heroes of arcantos yeah i'll, I'll have to I'll, I'll go back through and check the, the notes because i remember there was some place where there was like the big long list of like emperors and stuff on the wall it wait i don't think yeah it was there. i think you're right These, yeah. uh granite statues with names uh crimeus the rector amala thunza felix minutius kalia yeah, those were the I don't heroes. Remember, I don't remember yeah. a list of emperors. So the last one was mm. what Blonveig had, which was the lexicon of Mithric. Um, so this is a standard grammar and dictionary of Mithric. Um, and uh, if you you would gather, like looking at this, it's, it's almost like a textbook that if you spent like two weeks studying it, you would, uh, that would give you a basic grasp of Mithric. Um, and if you spent a year systematic study on the book, you would provide full reading fluency. So Anwi already has that. Um, I don't think any of the rest of you guys do, though. Yeah, but how long is really he going to last? So it's nice to have a backup. Yep. <laughs> Very true. Is it, is it useful in the sense that, like, if we did lose um, Anwi, we could carry the book around and use it to translate things? Uh, no. You, it's not that yeah it's it's a standard grammar and dictionary well we could get a get kind of a gist of something i would say that yeah there's no rule for it but i would probably rule if you were carrying it around that if you were willing to spend the time like it would definitely be like a, a turn burner right sure 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 um, but yeah well, I, like, I could see that i could see that like if the if the 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 sign in mithric said something we could read it well enough to know well that's the word for danger and that's the word for do not open door you know okay yeah i think that, that would work i would probably okay. say like it maybe mm -hmm. depending on the complexity of the message that you could like within a couple turns probably get the basic gist and if you spend even more you could probably get a fairly you know like a the whole crux of the message right okay that works that's that works, reasonable that works for me do we, do we want to leave these here then uh guys i think you want to bring I mean, the Mithric one and leave, or leave all of them? It feels bad really to wanna... leave the leave the poison one sitting around too. Well, we could um, yeah, that's wrap them up and hide them with our gems in the ruined tower. That's what I was going to see. I remember that we have a hide eel, so maybe we just uh, jam it up in there. It should be no surprise either that the um, the use of poisons is heavily prescribed in the Empire, right? Like it's not um, at all socially acceptable. Like there are tons all. of tales and all that sort of stuff that, you know, it's the classic thing, you know, the, um, how people, you know, how people right. in culture view poison. So that's not a, it's not a book that you would ever want to say like, oh yeah, that's mine. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Um, you don't want that out in the open. Unless uh, you and do. we definitely don't want that stored in the inn with uh, Cronus and Estelle you know, getting their mitts on it. How many uh, um, slots does that one take? Each book takes up a book? slot. Yeah, I think we should leave them. 
we we should we should check on our stash anyway. Why don't we check on our stash and uh, um, put the books in there? I I can um, you know what I I was planning on like snooping around a little bit tonight um, invisibly anyway. Uh, I'll just go over there invisible, check on the stash, add the books to it. Anything else right. we want to dump in there, and then uh, well, what else did we you know, pull let's, up? We brought up um, where was the stash? It was in, in the ruined ruin tower, tower, just across the way from the inn, the one where we we spent the night there. I think one time hiding out or something like that. Oh yeah, but that, that that's it's like across marked the on Albert with a red. Yeah, I see it, but it's uh, not. It's not that one. It's it's the one it's that's on, even closer to the inn, actually. Yeah, it's on our yeah. side. I think it's. Uh, it's this okay. one right here. I don't know if I can. Yeah, that's one. it. That's the one. Okay, gotcha. We have some gems yeah, but... hidden there, like as our backup stash. We could hide the books there. You also heard um, that that was the. Um... Remember, you overheard like some of the grooms like talking about, or uh... I thought that was. Uh... Yeah, I remember that there was like a silver box or something. I, th I thought that was over here on this side. It might be the Western Tower. I think you might be right. Yeah, yeah. but just so you know, that's a that, that's a thing. Yeah, because I, I got greedy about it. Yeah, I got greedy about it, but then I realized, like, oh man, it's so far because you have to go all the way down and then across a couple of bridges and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was so, a there was a, a skeleton that was, a, a, according to them, clutching a tarnished silver coffer in, mm -hmm. within the rubble. Right. I mean, at some point, I think we want to check out that western area anyway because that's where Garalad's like. Um, uh, secret tunnels kind of empty out and there's like that um uh, arena or something like a training arena or yeah, something and over that's there. off the map that's so that's like west off the map but don't forget oh, too farther that, west. Oh. Uh, yeah it's further it's further west it's like out oh. here oh okay. right oh and then don't forget too that um this is uh, the west gate where this is where the the sage sage slash monks were, have been seen to congregate and they're also uh rebuilding refortifying this tower right here and uh and that's wasn't it Plumthorn right? who was? What'd you say? That's the Setites, isn't it? Yeah, I think Plumthorn was the one who told us that it was like Setites yeah. disguising themselves as as monks and scholars. That's what he claimed. Yeah. They've seen they've seen people moving not only um, eastward this way, but also southward towards um, Crestonistrix's tower, which is very yeah. strange. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, guys, you know, not to be a nudge, but if Matt's going to spend like the next 20 minutes sneaking around the basement, can we get to it? Real quick. Yes. Uh, so we're going to hide the books mm -hmm. and we are keeping this, the, uh, the symbols of Thoth. Then Onward had some stuff that he found. Um, I also, f I found two potions on Blondveg, which I would like to do the little, you know, tasty taste to see if I can figure out what they are. Sip, you sip. Yeah, I had one that was golden with red motes and one that was a viscous orange. Um, right. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so if I'm going to carry those, I need to kind of know what they are, kind of. Which one are you going to sit first? Uh oh, he's laughing. Oh, he's <laughs> <laughs> you got you got a spare one one red ready, motes. I'll test the one with the red motes. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, Da, da, da. <laughs> Look how pleased John looks. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> let's see. I turned oh. into a newt. Um. So you, uh, more you take a you take a little sip and you immediately feel like just slightly dazed and euphoric, um, as a as you see like a single chirping bird start to like float around your head. Just like a chirp, 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 you know, like the cartoons, like whenever you get hit and it's just like a, chirp, 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 you know, but it, it lasts for like just a brief second. But you're completely out of it while you're sort of hallucinating this bird. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Potion of little Tweety birds. Got it. I mean, uh, some sort of stupefaction or probably not something that uh, I'm going to find useful in combat is my guess. Okay. Yeah, Potion of little Tweety birds. Come on. <laughs> Um, and then the, uh, the orange one. Uh, so the orange one, when you drink it, it's, um, how to describe it? Uh, you see, like, I guess like Avariscos and Goran would sort of see more sort of shift through a multitude of different 
forms on his face like very quickly like he like his his head turns into like a a horse then a bear then a cat then a lizard then a bird and and then it like shifts back like really quick just like a like real quick huh crazy motion of shape change but like like a a split second what mike or alter self or maybe something like that yeah yeah polymorph or something like that Potion turned into a, a critter. So you got, you know, like two little critter based uh, potions. That's great. Okay. Um, anything else we need to leave wow, behind Ted, here? Ted's so nonplussed by my potion. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> See, here's the thing goblins are very happy to be as they are. We don't need to be other things. Okay. We're already euphoric just being goblins. Okay. You just tuck those away into the back of your mind and forget that they even exist. <laughs> <laughs> well what i'm going to do instead is tuck them into yost's backpack and instruct him to carry them safely okay very good all right so uh nighttime rolls around um it's pretty peaceful at the end tonight you don't really hear that much at night um weather's pretty okay avaricios you're going to stay up and what oops Hold on one second. Seems to have lost everybody. Give me one second, folks. Okay, back in action. Just had a little technical blip there. Um, And we were talking about Avaricios and how he was planning to go invisible at nighttime. Maybe root around a little bit. Yeah. Um, Yeah, there's just a couple things like real quick. And he would do this part uh, first since I think it's the easiest, which is um, uh, I guess Yost has the, uh, the other ring. So, um, you know, ask Yost to, you know, uh, a- activate uh, his, uh, I guess it turns him blind, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. And, uh, um, you know, I don't know about people... this, Avaricios. Well, uh, it's, it is okay. Just uh, for a few minutes, I'm going to go hide some stuff. I don't want anybody to know. I'm you know, just going to go out, hide some stuff, come back, take a little look around and come back up. And, uh, you know, if... Um, uh, if suddenly you are able to uh, see again, that means uh, maybe I came up with a little bit of trouble and maybe could use some help. Okay, uh, that's fine. So yeah, he will do that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so um, uh, I don't know if there would be an issue um, kind of uh, sneaking uh, invisibly over to the the tower. doesn't seem like it's that far away from the... Um, uh, from the inn to uh, store, I guess we were going to lock away the, the books and uh, uh, the chain mail that we had from Plumthorn and any of the other stuff. Yeah, that we, yeah he had a battle axe that yeah. we wanted to test. Um, and I think that's really all. I mean, there was a couple other things that I'm just going to hold on to. Like I've got Blondrake's dagger. Um, we're keeping the, the Thoth symbols. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there would yeah, be a chain. anything else to, to worry about. If you're going over to the tower, there will be uh, one roll. Okay. You're okay with it? This is fine. I am invisible and I'm being super sneaky. Oh, how, what's the um, uh, uh, ambient light like? Can I get by on starlight and moonlight? Uh, it's pretty freaking dark. I gotta say, like even even with a clear sky, like you, you know, it's it's gonna be dangerous. Okay. Okay. Um, well, uh, in that case, I would need a, uh, I would, you know, I would use the lantern, um, but I would, uh, I guess I can't shield it if I'm, uh, invisible, can I? Mm-mm. There would just be a little, uh, invisible glow. I'll tell you what. What? I've got, um, I mean, sorry, Mortis has, uh, InfraVision. Maybe you should go. To- Okay, I'll go hide the stuff and come back, and then you can go dig around in the in the cellar like a priest. Or you could do it at the same time. We've only got the one invisibility ring. Mm. Yeah, you just okay. You go hide the stuff, and then I'll go. I just want to peek down there and see what's going on in their basement. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll take the ring. Yost goes blind. Mortis goes over to the tower, (laughs) hides the stuff using his infravision. Um. Okay. Bob's so, your uncle. So who, who's what's going on first? Mort's going to the tower. Mort's yes, going to the tower the first. first. Thing. Okay, and you're in your your what with the torch? Mm. Nope, infravision and invisible. Infravision, invisible. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, 
Mort, you you head out at nighttime, um, yes, using your dark vision um, as best you can. Bad can possibly um, happen as you move towards the tower itself. You can see you now. You, you, there's the rushing river, like the Swift River, that's running downstream, right? Yeah. Um, as you are getting to the tower and you're rooting through, um, you can see that your stash still uh, seems to uh, be uh, there. Like nothing's nothing's missing. However, yep. you do hear on the other side of the wall, on the interior side, um, you hear some gruff voices um, and some scratching around, like in the dirt uh, and up against like the the ruined wall, which you can't quite see it because you're sort of obscured. You're sort of within the the ruins of the of the of the tower itself. Seems to be Correct. about like you hear like at least at least like three or four, possibly even more. Uh, voices okay so um the thing to do now is to stop digging around in the dirt and making noise and sit very quietly and listen to what is going on um and see if i can't figure out who i'm hearing and so on and so forth right and what they're saying and these sorts of things so and uh so I'm also going to be as stealthy as I can, which is, uh, oh, that's only underground. Oh, well. Uh, okay, fine. I'm just going to listen, though, very, very carefully. Okay, so you hear, like, the jangling of armor and of weapons at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the the voices are speaking in modern Arkantian, a little bit debased a little okay. bit. Um, but they have sort of a gruff... Uh, sound to them as if they're not coming out of like normal human throats and it but it appears to be like a like military a, a military unit of some sort you can hear a commander's voice sort of ordering people around quietly um and them responding in kind and it looks like they're searching for something um or being commanded to like look for things um and if you just give me one moment uh let's see that uh Um, Didn't we hear some talk about hobgoblins at one point, guys? Not hobgoblins, no. Um, I don't remember that. We we've heard about the beast men that wander around in, in imperial armor and get eaten by dragons. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of. Okay. You, you hear you hear like the 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 commanders seem to be ordering them to look for um, mushrooms of a kind that they call cloud caps. Remember, the queen is always looking for cloud caps. Search around. They must be around here somewhere. Keep your eye in the sky, Ooh. though. Keep your eye in the sky. She hunts it's at the, night. It's the beast man. Um, I fear the dragon. Okay. I'm telling you, boss, there's nothing here. Could use a okay, good bed. I will Don't like I the will open sky, boss. Put, I, I will stay put and quiet and just wait it out. Um, it, as they start to go away, I will try and figure out a way to see if I can see them and where they're going. Okay. But not uh, until you, they start to move away. You hear a couple of them suggest like, uh, like they, 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 they think to themselves, we should try to get across the river. I bet you we could find some across the river. Um, uh, and one of them points to like, has anyone ever gone into that, the tower on the Western side? Um, and, uh. And the commander says, it looks a little too close to comfort to those uh, those priests that we saw building over there. I don't want to encounter them. We need to still be a little bit secret about our, about what we're doing up here. Let's stay close. Close to the river on the eastern side. You see those lights out there? That's the end. The end of the broken head. Liable to be eye, searching eyes out there as well. Let's go back. All right. And they sort of, you can hear them sort of marching away after some time. So I want to like climb up a little bit, see if I can see out there a crack or a gap or something, and if I can see their forms, yeah. you know, moving off. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of watch them. So you see that there, um, there's basically there's six of them. Five of them have the heads of various canines, usually long snouted, like hunting sort of canines, and the uh, the commander seems to actually have a goat head. However, they are all armored similarly. Um, uh, let's see. They have. Um, they're all wearing ring mail. They're all carrying shields and spears, uh, and actually, they're really heavily armored. They have ring mail and shield. They have a spear, and then on their sides, they have short swords and short bows. 
Wow. And they are marching in tight, organized fashion. And their military accoutrement is like very well um, uh, maintained. I, I wonder what queen they're talking about. Yeah, yeah I'm a little curious about that too. Uh, so can I see where they're headed? Yes, they're going down the river. Like southward along the river. Okay. All right. Um, once they're sufficiently out of earshot, I will finish hiding the things and scamper back to the inn to relay all of this. Okay, cool. They also appear to be using um, like a hooded lantern surreptitiously to kind of find yeah. their way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. In the meantime, Avaricios is, um, you're doing what now, Avaricios? Um, I was waiting until he uh, came back. Um, I wanted to um, oh, okay. ask Yos for a uh, uh, a few more minutes of blindness. I just wanted to go down, you know, wait until it's kind of dark, and then, you know, go down and just take a peek in uh, in that basement room that we saw uh, before. See, check the door, see if it's locked, see what's going on down right. there. Okay, so you know that there's likely a trap door that's behind the bar. Mm -hmm. is, that where you, is that where you want to try to access? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so uh, make me a. Um, you aren't. You, are, are you? You're invisible. What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. Not, so I get back. Yeah. Yeah. I, and then we switch. I I, uh, I become visible outside the inn. I go inside. I say, "Oh, that was a hell of a piss I just had to take," and I hand uh, uh, Avaricius the ring, and uh, right. Yost will make him blind or make himself blind and. Gotcha. And okay. That goes. Okay. So you're invisible, but you're not silent. There are people moving right. around. I mean, most people are asleep, but you never know. Um, right. And you're you're trying to open up a trapdoor that you've never ventured into before. So um, I'm going to mm -hmm. make you roll a d6, and uh, a one will create noise. Okay. I'm ready when you are. I am ready for this. That's a nice. six. A six. You're I'm good to very, go. very good at trapdoors. All right, Avricius. You can feel the spirit within you, the newer spirit, Avaricios, take the light in the activities that you are performing right now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so you uh, you pull a ring on this thing, and the trap door opens, and there is a sta uh, a ladder that leads down, like a sloped ladder. Okay. Okay. In the darkness. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think I would leave it. Uh, leave it open. Hmm. Am I going to leave it open or close it behind me? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I think. I think I'll close it behind me so I can uh, light up down there and not. Uh, okay. Not be seen. Okay. Cool. So the Here trapdoor does. There was no attempt to make it hidden, right? It's just. It's just hidden because it's behind the bar. However, mm -hmm. when you go down there, you can see that it's. Um, it looks very mundane and normal. Basically, what's down here is the uh, keg cellar, right? So there's a whole bunch of casks of ale, sort of mounted on walls on their uh, mounted on a rack, like against the wall on its side. Mm -hmm. You know, there's um, a place to like tap them and to bottle them and all that sort of stuff down here. It looks relatively normal. Smells like a lot. It smells like college, and uh, <laughs> 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 um, and. Um, uh, yeah, that's basically what you see down here. Just a lot of kegs of ale. Okay. Okay. Huh. Um, there are a few that are sort of set upright. Um, one of them is being used as sort of a table. There's a few tools, like a, what do you call it? Um, the thing that you, that you knock the bung out of the, out of the keg. Well, I guess it's just a hammer, right? Whatever. Um, but bung yeah, hammer? I don't yeah, know. Bung hammer. Yeah. yeah. Bung uh, hammer. <laughs> bung uh, hammer. I don't know. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That went in a, 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 a strange place. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. So he would be curious, like, if there are any um, uh, uh, trap doors in here. Like, mm -hmm. trying to be mindful, like, if there are these tables with stuff on there mm -hmm. that you know, with stuff might easily knock over. Like, he would carefully, like, uh, you know, relocate those just enough so that he could like check underneath the tables if there are any rugs. But yeah, like, knowing that Ardenvul is down. Yeah. Um, He's going to check uh, very carefully for any kind of uh, Moving additional around. trappers. Gotcha. Okay. So like the upright kegs, you're actually going to shift them a little bit, careful not to knock anything over sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Like if there's stuff on top, you'd like relocate it or something. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, you do not see, you take your time. You're very, very careful. You're moving every cave that you can possibly move. Um, you do not find any other trap doors. However, you do while you're moving kegs around. 
all of them are at least half full, like they're all heavy, right? However, you do find one that you move and it moves, um, it's rather lightweight, like it appears to be empty. And when you move it, you can actually hear something else solid in the barrel, mm -hmm. in the keg itself, in uh, the bottom. Okay. Like okay. instead of liquid, uh, you hear like a go, go, go inside. Yeah. Um, is there like a, uh, the, the tap hole? Can I, is there like a, a cork or something I can unplug to look inside? You sure can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, using your lantern light to kind of peer in this tough, you know, I mean, you can't really aim it down there, but, um, you do see that there is some sort of metal box on the bottom of that keg. Keg is about waist high. Okay. Okay. Um, seems like they're kind of secret, uh, secret stash. Um, I mean, there is an inherent risk to robbing the people that provide yeah, us the, the, the most close, like, area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know, he's that's not his intention in going down here, it's really just to kind of snoop around. Um, so what's in the box? What's in the box? It is a, it's, it's a box, it's a box. Um, uh, can I, can I reach this box, or is it like, can I only see it through the little, uh, you can only see it, but when you okay. kind of take in the fact, you, you, yeah, so it's sort of like a, what do you call it? Like a ship in a bottle sort of thing. You're like, how the fuck? Right. Uh huh. Okay. But so there's like obviously the, like some, yeah, some yeah. kind of secret to getting it open or something. Um, and it makes sense to him that this is probably like where they store their extra stuff, but really like the, the thing that he was very mindful of and looking for down here is, um, the, uh, the magic items, that uh, he knew that the uh, the Plumthorn gang was like you know taking from people, and they were like coming back up. He was curious if maybe this was a a, a storage place for those, but doesn't see those. You just want your torch back. I want this my torch. I know where that is. I, I know where that is. Torch back. <laughs> um, uh, Make sure you're very careful about which hand you pick it up in. <laughs> All right. Think long and hard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, what's he going to do? Um, uh, you know, just, just to fuck with people just for a little bit of fun. He's going to take, um, uh, reach into the bag and pull out. Um, let's see what would, what would be good. What would be good? Um, he's, he's, hmm. Yeah, you know what? He's just going to bring out a little bit of um, uh, uh, red paint. Uh huh. Uh, and he's just going to, um, on one of the tables, um, uh, I, I want to make sure I get his name right. It's Wick Trimmer, the guy down. Hmm, right? Nice. <laughs> um, Wick Trimmer was here. He's gonna start a gang war. That's all he's right. just he's just gonna put um, on on the keg that has the box in it mm -hmm. a double a red W. <laughs> okay, like on the on the on the top of it, like yeah, like this he's is, gonna this put is it an up ended keg. So there's like a flat there's a flat yeah. top round top on and the, then on the a keg. Hole. Yeah, there's a yeah. hole in the top of that, and on yeah. that you're gonna put a W. Yeah, yeah, on the, on the keg where they're storing their secret shit, he's going to paint a red W. Okay. Got it. And then um uh he'll, he'll uh put the put the paint back, I guess. And he'll go uh and then yep, then he'll be done. Then he's just going to like um uh, do, do 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 back up the ladder. Okay listen at the trap door to make sure he doesn't hear any voice and if it if it seems quiet he'll go back upstairs yes it appears to be quiet all right all right you feel you feel like you've done a you've done a blessed thing tonight <laughs> oh, wait, is, wait is there is there if, if there's nobody around is the bar empty the bar's empty yeah it's quiet okay. i reach into the bag i'm just uh, is there is there any glue in the bag just like a little bit of glue no oh, just glue their bung hole shut yeah uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like college. You could possibly, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm just gonna. I just want to glue the bolt in her. I know Estelle has like a hidden crossbow uh -huh. underneath the bar. Yeah, I want to glue the bolt, but more little glue on the bolt. 
Oh my god! The glue on the you're gonna get her killed, dude. You mean like the loaded bolt in the in the crossbow? Yeah, just like doo, 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 just a few little drops okay. of glue, just okay. enough to screw it up. <laughs> All right, sweet, sweet. Okay, cool. And then up to bed okay. you go. Up to bed I go. Oh, oh, that's good. The nice little walk. I am glad you are back. I am tired of being blind. <laughs> oh, you know, this keeps. I, what this keeps poking me, it's torturing me. <laughs> oh, that is that is not that is not good. Let me. I will tell you a story. I will tell you a story. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I forgot to ask uh, Ted. You didn't drop anything off at the stash, right? Yeah, you the books. Moved? Oh, the books, the books. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. No yeah, problem. That, I uh, think did that... you wait? Did you drop off the chainmail too? Yeah, and the okay. the Plumthorn's armor and weapons that we took. Yeah. Okay, so um, um, so that's all wrapped up and. In buried under bricks there as well all right next day uh can someone please roll me some weather 2d6 oh we haven't done that in forever yeah it's 21st we've what day who's, who's rolling i just did some stuff so you guys do you guys roll something like okay 2d6 got it oh uh, uh seven boom six six good enough uh it's That's good enough good. yep it's a clement and cheery day not an issue. Now let's go underground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, the morning rises. Um, you uh, you go down to breakfast, and you can see like Estelle's behind the bar. She looks a little bit grumpy for some reason. <laughs> a little bit confused. She uh, eyes she eyes you all suspicious. You come down, but she doesn't she doesn't say anything. Um, uh, Cronus uh, kind of is bleary eyed, but he comes down and he's looks over at his uh, at his wife a little bit. Um, with fear in his eyes, and he kind of looks over at you, and he's like, you didn't hear anything strange last night, did you? Anyone tromping about? I did tromping, not. Did you guys tromping? hear any tromping? I didn't hear any tromping. Nary a tromp. Uh, I'm just yeah, asking. Nary wait, a just some, some uh, I, I think Estelle was having the, uh, the night sweats or something. I don't know what was going on, but she she could have sworn that someone must have been moving around oh. downstairs. I don't like it. It's a dangerous place out here. Oh, nice maybe, maybe, maybe you have some vermin. Possibly. Perhaps you had a a bit of ill cheese with your evening meal, madam. <laughs> Quite possibly. I can did, give you a you classic say... first level quest of ridding our cellars of rats. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, did you did you say that they possibly have some vermin? Ah, vermin. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so hey guys, I have a I have an idea, which is when we head towards um, wherever it is we decide we're going next, we could walk along the river and see if we could track where those beastmen are coming up and going okay. down. Or we could stick with our plan, <laughs> get Tresty, and then go on a dungeon delve. We have we have uh, a no, whole no. we have a whole day before Tresty even shows up. Yeah, I am not. We may have a whole day, but Mike only has like another hour before I'm tired. Let's okay. go. Come I am, on. <laughs> Mike, calm yourself. I'm not I suggesting won't. we follow them down underground. I'm just I thought it would be nice if we're headed that way anyway, which we mm -hmm. are, we could see if we could figure out where they're coming up and down. You so just, we don't run into them later accidentally. I feel like I'm taking my kids to Toys R Us. Does you guys get like run down every aisle just like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we can John, we can easily John, just fast forward. Book up? We, would you hold the book up and show Mike how big this dungeon is? Just yeah. to show him. I it's, think it's, he needs a reminder. It's quite large. <laughs> um, do you? Uh, we can certainly just fast forward to when you want to, uh, when you uh, anticipate that Trusty will arrive. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes. Yeah, absolutely, John. I don't know <laughs> what else we could possibly do. <laughs> I Except don't read to... the books that we already read, and uh, then I will start them. studying Mithric. Okay. No, I can't. I put the book away. <laughs> Dang it! You put the book away. Yeah. All right. I'm going to teach Yost how to play uh, poker. <laughs> okay. Or whatever the local are. I'm going so. to practice with Plumthorn's battle axe against uh, Samantha the Red, and see if I can ascertain if it has any magical properties. Uh, which battle axe? The one from Plumthorn. Oh, Plumthorns, yeah. Um, right, right, right. Uh, let me check here. That's a good question, actually. Yeah. He says no. Well, he's a lying dead guy. So maybe yeah, he is. Uh, 
Oh, he's lucky if right. he's dead at this point. And, and I, I wasn't planning. I mean, we could do it. I wasn't planning on uh, preparing some magic detection today. I was because uh, I think we were going down. No, yeah. it's fine, dude. I would. I can. I mean, this works. So at least tell me if it's magical or if it sucks or not. Yeah. You, you, it, 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 it doesn't suck. It's a nice battle axe, um, but it does not appear to have any ability that you can conjure out of it. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, she does ask, however, since she has the man weeper, she asks you. Um, that's a mighty fine halberd that you've managed to find. Would you, uh, wouldn't mind wielding that? I do have some skill as far as wielding uh, large pole arms. Yes, Samantha, that is a wonderful idea, Samantha the Red of Lawful Nature. <laughs> what a shame we don't have it on us. Where is it? It's in Gosterwick. Yeah, yeah, it's stored. Oh. It, it's at Wick Trimmers. Yeah, but can we retcon that? Because we talked about this on the Discord. Like before we ever came that's, up here, yeah, that's up. To... What? No, that that conversation you, you has happened. It, you, you know, it's it's if it's not there, it's not yeah. there. Just keep it in mind next time you're in Gosterwick. Yeah, yeah, it, be... it's in, it's definitely it's held at Wick Trimmers. Seth Bane. Seth Bane is beyond. Seth your... Bane is sitting in a closet. Yeah. Oh, what are the chances of us running into any Setites? Come on. I'm sure it'll be well, fine. Gosterwick, definitely the best place for this weapon. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Anyways, uh, so but yeah, she she does have man weeper. She has ran, the Ransur plus one. Um, okay, so wait. Yes. Since we're talking about weapons, uh, the spear that turned into a lockpick. Mm. I want to say get that little lockpick out and say clav him again and see what happens. And it like expands outwards into the great long spear that it was spear. before. Um. I'll take a few rounds at the old uh, um, sparring there with uh, Sam to see if this spear is just a oh, lockpick or if it's a. If you're sparring, spear. you're sparring against me. Okay, fine. I'll <laughs> spar against <laughs> you, you. You both draw draw a crowd as the two short folk go at it. Um, the, oh! <laughs> Ow! But Mort. Um, uh, well, it's what Mort versus the pin versus the pin, right? So. Nope, nope, I have the pin as well. Oh shit! He's got Mark. all the magical items, dude. Damn! All right. <laughs> uh, spear versus spear, then, right? Spear nope. versus no. Nope. That boy is just my 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 hand axe. Oh, the hand axe. What okay. do I have? One handed axe and my plus two shield. Okay, so yeah, Mort, uh, you you can tell that it it, it moves quite uh, easily in your hands um, uh, with with surprising accuracy. It is a spear plus one with that additional little juice additional juice okay great yeah um the, the, the name of the weapon put it away the name of the Why weapon don't you is... shrink that up and give it to me since you already have a magical weapon what are you gonna do with a lock pick with your big fat things or something? wow <laughs> oh, oh racist mother <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't care about laugh. it for the lock pick dude I, I care about you... it so that if we come against something that I need a magical weapon to hit you it laugh. You laughed at the whole fecund thing. I'm mad at you now. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Second. Um, it's funny because it's true. Um, the, na the name of the weapon is Clavem. That is this name. Clavem. Clavem. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you want it, Mike? Would, would that be better than you? I thought you you don't have a magic no, weapon. I want, okay. no, I no, I don't want to have a magical weapon, but I have a plus two shield, which I like having the AC. But if we come against something that's like, ah, ha, ha, I can only be hit by magical weapons, then I'm going to yep. be sad. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, spears can be used one-handed in your rule set, right, John? I think yeah. Argus used to use it one-handed. Yeah, so fine. You just, you oh, just... so if I can use it one-handed, I can use it with a shield. There you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. Do you want the Do you want the sh the spear? Or do you want the pin back? No, dude, the pin is too good. You take the pin. Okay. Okay. You take the Mike pin. is now carrying Clavem the spear. Yay! Okay. I have a plus one weapon. All right, so uh, sparring, and then um, eventually, as afternoon rolls around, we're going to say it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. You can hear uh, people approaching, and um, it appears that uh, Tresty is actually aboard a um, like a small riding horse, um, and she has like two guards that are sort of with her as well. And uh, she comes through. She looks like much more like put together now, like she's. She's been able to rest and recuperate in Gosterwick. Um, uh, and uh, she has like very fine silken robes on. Um, but she also has gear as well that she has strapped to the back of her horse that she unloads and the guards help her unload it. 
um, but she has her hair up in her bun. Um, she is a half elf, if you remember. And uh, she uh, looks very determined when she steps down, but she smiles when she says, it's it's so good to see you again. And Samantha, you're looking well and y'all. Um, she kind of looks like, and, uh, and she looks at, and Yost, she's, you know, it's just a nice greeting as she, as she kind of comes down and she looks, uh, uh, she looks well. Um, however, she quickly relates to you that she, uh, is still without a spell book. She does not have the funds in order to, to get a, to, to scribe new spells. And so she was desperately hoping that, um, the rumor that she, the message that was sent is true and that you are planning to delve back down as she is ready. Yep. Yep. Okay. Is, is she? Um, and again, I, I, maybe I'm just off on my uh, magic user stuff. If we showed her the uh, the spell book that we uh, got from uh, the halflings, because we have a spell book, mm-hmm. can she right. read that, or does she need read magic to She's be in able the to same do that? Is on where she needs to have read magic to read the magic in the book, right? She, what, what she can determine, what any spellcaster can determine, is whether or not it can be understood by them. And she does. She knows that this is arcane magic. Okay. Um, and that should she be, able, if she should, should she have the spell, she would be able to read it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which is why, like back in the day, I was like advocating for Onwear to get like scrolls of read magic or whatever, so we could at least figure out what's in that book. Mm-hmm. You know. Brutal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, guys, last we saw uh, Isocrates' exit was the Spider Haven right over here. So, are we going to go ahead and depart and check that bad boy out? I think we should. Were you pointing at it on the owlbear there, Mike? Yeah, I I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to ping. I think it was here. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay, that's where you saw Isocrates come up. And that's also where the spiders were that attacked your donkey? Yeah, which makes me a little concerned, you know? It's the uh, teardrop shape on the right hand side, Gorn. Mike. That's the pointer, just so you know. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh. okay. So, yeah. Right. You uh, mount up? Yes. Let's put a. Do you have what you need? Um, oh, you know what? I, I, would, uh, I would like to get some. Uh, oh, um, I know the cost is high, but you know whatever we'll pay pay a premium. Uh, a little few a few extra rations. Um, yeah, just just for safety, just in case. And Samantha the Red is carrying almost nothing and has like a really good strength. So we should probably get her a week's of rations. She has a wine skin and a bed roll, and like three torches, and that's it. Um. So let's, can we just give her some standard equipment? We should just give them some equipment. Okay. I need a, so for her, John, I just need a week's rations, um, 50 feet of rope. And I think that's it, right? Week's rations and 50 feet of rope. Uh, for now, to start. She's got armor. She's got a weapon. Yeah. It's two-handed. She doesn't need a shield. Wait, uh, helmet. She, 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 do they have any helmets? Uh, no, they don't have helmets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna see. I know I bought one for uh, Nial. Nial is wearing one. And I think a week's worth of the rations are three slots, right? If I remember correctly. Three rations to a slot. Okay. Um, so she'll John, have nine days. Uh, John, I, I checked the bag. Is there a helmet in there? Um. No, I don't think a helmet's going to be there. It's not mundane, really. Okay. Um, and, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Trying to find the. Uh, da, da, da. Ugh. All right. That's right. He doesn't really sell anything. It's going to depend on whether or not there are peddlers here. Anyways, okay. So, what do you what do you want to buy? Uh, three slots worth of rations, which I guess is nine days, uh, 50 feet of rope, a large sack, and a tinder box. Okay, so uh, rope is going to be two gold, large sack is four gold, okay. uh, tinder box is six gold. Wow, and you want standard rations, yeah, for nine days. Well, that's three slots worth, right? Because you said three days per slot, right, Ted? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't yeah. think we need nine days worth of food, but well, then I'll I'll take off. I'll take off. So six days, so two slots worth. Yeah, this this is emergency. If anything okay, ten, were to happen to the bag, right? Ten gold. Okay, so that's what a total of twenty gold. Then I'll take it off the party funds, Mike. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. It was ten plus. It was two, for the two rope. plus four plus six plus. Uh, um, I think you said ten for the rations. So 12, right? Twenty-two gold. Yeah. Twenty-two. Sounds okay. good. Okay. All right. So, All right, so Tresty also, um, she brought because she's not going to go defenseless. Um, she actually uh, has a light crossbow on her, and um, a couple of she has like two daggers on her as well. Just so you know. Um, cool. But that's that's basically all she's got. Otherwise, she is like she is unarmed, uh, uh, unarmored, um, and she does not have any other protection. So just be aware. Um, she does have a pretty high AC, though. I mean, a pretty high dexterity. So she has like mm. a, I think she would have like a 12 AC. Same as Yost. There you go. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got the three of you plus your three retainers plus Tresty. So you got seven of you as you move forward. Uh, back, back to the halls. This time, though, through a, another entrance. Okay, so are you uh, are you going by through the gates, through the north gates as usual? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You understand mm-hmm. that you are now moving in, um, in late afternoon, right? So yep. we are very visible. I'm just saying, it's like you know, you're gonna you'll you'll be tired eventually, um, just like last time. Okay, but you uh, yeah, so you move through on the northern boulevard. You do not hear or see anything that you do see a couple of wheeling forms to the southwest you think they might be the wyverns um, but you're not really sure it's quite a long ways away but you don't hear anything um you see the poor remains very few of your mule oh. near the road Ooh. as you as you move away uh but uh, no signs of the of the spiders that emerged although you were heading directly into that area so uh after about let's see what is it uh where we i got that right here give me one second sorry uh in the pyramids about three turns about uh about two turns about 20 minutes or so you uh you go off the road towards the ruined building um so it looks like at one point this was a uh, a high priest's urban residence of some sort like a like a wealthy higher up priest uh, would be able to afford this place. Um, uh, it's basically in ruins though. There, yeah, th- the reports from the guards were is that they saw Isocritus actually climb out of a hole in the midst of those ruins. So that's what you're basically looking for. Okay. okay. You do anything special? Where do you guys talk possibly- Spiders. You saw actual spiders here, and now we're looking to go down this hole. Yeah, yeah. this is brilliant. This is this is great. That's what this well, is. I, I have an idea. I mean, well, okay. spi- you know, spiders. Um, well, you know, they they make webs, so we can look for webs. Like that would be a good thing. Okay. But also, if we see if we see a place that might looks like it might be a hole, we go down. Um, we can just like drop a rat down ahead of us and see if anything like Arr! comes out and gets it. You have a rat. It's Monday I think night. so. I can I can just pull a rat out of my bag. You pull mice out to train them. That's true. Okay. If we don't like the rat, I could pull out the chicken. Ooh, chicken. Very much. I, I think I think I think that I think you know a chicken might look a little weird in the dungeon, but the rat scurrying around, ah, you know. Okay. All right. Mm. All right. So you. Okay. So we we hunt for the hole. And and do we want to have someone go ahead and scout as an invisible ninja? No, because then that leaves somebody else blind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just be ready. Okay. So you have to pick your way through the rubble, right? It's like choked yeah. with rubble, um, but it's 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 uh, the walls are, are are formed enough that you can get determined like what the nature of the place used to be. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you can see uh, that there is a point where the rubble has been sort of thrown to the side a little bit, exposing a rather large hole. Um, that leads directly downwards. Um, it looks to be like as if at some point it was mm-hmm. a, there was a stairway leading down that was wooden, but that stairway has since like rotted away, right? So it's not a natural hole 
uh, in the ground is like it's obviously like was meant to open up into a cellar and you can see as the light is um coming from the west now right so that it sort of illuminates a uh um uh, a cellar below that has been choked with the rubble from up above that has fallen into this hole right and um as the as the setting sun sort of illuminates like a beam down into the cellar you can see that vegetation has started to sort of creep in between the cracks of the all that rubble like underground because mm -hmm. of the rain and the environment that has been able to come in from there right um and there are indications that there are that there were like arachnids around like there's like wisps and strands of web that are lining the hole um and also down below in, in the choked rubble um you do see that there is a number of interesting things just just peering down you can see that there is um uh looks to be three marble statues scattered about uh one is actually still standing but leaning against some some like a broken pillar down there the other two are on their side they look to be all in different states of being slightly broken looks like they were all about six feet tall like man-sized it does spring to mind um the statue brokers back at the inn yeah um mm -hmm. i was just about to ask about them and yep, they're that's a hmm? that's a return trip item there yeah it was, looks like they would be heavy um and they are broken so but uh, still um are are they down in the hole or are they up in the ruins up top down in the hole yeah although okay. it, it's quite possible that since this was looks like it used to be a cellar that they used to be up above right mm -hmm. and they are sort of splayed um near you know the entrance to the hole so you do how see how far that, down uh, yeah how, how far, far down, down those guys yeah. about 10 feet oh that's not too bad mm -hmm. is there any evidence of a rope or humanoid tracks, or any evidence of a person making their way out of the hole and then up to where we are. It's yeah, a, like how you'd get out. Tracks is like impossible because it's all just rubble, right? However, yeah. Goran, when you do look around, you do see that there is, um, it was actually in the shadows, uh, there is a length of rope okay. um, that has knots in it for easier climbing. Okay. So, when I, we when we learned that Isocritus was coming out, he was coming out of this hole, and he was going where down to Gosterwick. Uh, not sure. He never came to the. We inn. never asked. We never asked the inn if they knew him. Uh, hmm. Anyway, they never mentioned that they that Isocritus ever went to the inn. Well, I mean, why would they? You know, didn't um, we get some evidence once that Isocritus was meeting? people though like we heard them say mm -hmm. somebody uh yes. told us uh in fact Nial told us that he thought isocritus was meeting people is that right hmm. uh we did some research down in gosterwick and got oh that's right yeah it was in gosterwick we were hearing from whoa it was from our uh 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 oh shoot i can't say the word this them themisthe focus. That was just uh, right on the tip of my tongue. Okay. <laughs> well, there's probably spiders waiting in, in that hole, I would think, right? Um Yeah, well uh what what I was what I can do is I can uh take a rat out of the bag. You know, he will live a, a, a short and interesting life. Um uh tie his tie his tail to some twine and just like lower him down. Like dangle him a little bit, like fishing for spiders. Because <laughs> he'll squeal and stuff. I love that. Who, who are you dangling down? A spider. Uh, Gorant in this bag. No, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, I'm going to reach into the bag, and I'm going to uh, pull out a, a, a rat who has done. Uh, a I'm, I'm reaching and hopefully searching for a rat who has, you know, made poor choices in his life and who's looking to make amends. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, tie uh, uh, his tail with uh, some of my twine and then uh, lower him down the hole. Yeah. Let him scamper around a little bit and see if any uh, uh, spiders leap out to eat him. Okay. Yeah. So he scampers off into the, uh, into the darkness, but you do not hear any squealing or violence take place. And he kind of, oh. he kind of appears back and everything seems fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, it's good. The spiders, you know, they, they got their fill of donkey and they just moved on. Mm -hmm. It might be the case. Yeah. I say we go um, down. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I found out. So uh, when you when you had come out of the dungeon and you were talking to the guards and what they had seen in the meantime while you were after your great escape, right? Um, mm-hmm. They saw a man fitting Isocrates' description come out of the out of this out of this place, and they actually met. Uh, he actually met and talked to some of the Knights of the Azure Shield, the same ones that you had left at the inn way back in the day, right? Right. Well, that makes sense because Isocrates is looking for the regalia. And he's like officially here on business. So he might be hanging out with Garalad to use the library down mm-hmm. there, but he's still going to have official contact with his, his real employer. I agree. So, and, yeah. and, you know, the thing is, is like, that is curious to me is how is he getting Garalad to not just feed him to his monkeys, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah, he, so there's got to be some payoff. Hmm. All right. Yeah, let's go. Some kind right. of like, yeah. So you're gonna use that rope to get down? Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna test it, John, before I put all my weight on it and make sure it's like secure. It's pretty secure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you going down first then, Gordon? I will. I will go down first. I um shrink clave them so it fits in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And then I throw my shield across my back and I climb down. Okay, not a problem. You drop down. Um everyone gets down safely. We're gonna go into dungeon turns now. Um you will need okay. a light source um anywhere beyond about a 10 foot radius as you're down here which is the only spot where there's actually light okay okay there's um, i will i have a a, a a bag lantern so i will pull the lantern out of the bag okay all lantern right lit uh we're gonna start it about we're gonna start the clock at about 4 p.m all right um okay have lantern's gonna end right here got it all right, so you drop down, uh, you light the lantern, you can see around you, choked with rubble, you do see indeed that there the are these uh, three statues here, marble, broken. Um, however, you do see, uh, just in, beyond the darkness, uh, to your right, eastward, there does appear jutting out of there uh, a much larger, much larger piece of a statue um, that appears to be a right leg, and that, that, that leg has a... Um, like a, a well carved grieve on it. Does the armor match uh, Arden's? It does. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Uh, piece nice, piece nice by piece. John. Are you guys okay. writing down these locations of these pieces of Arden? Are you sure? <laughs> You're right, I am. That's, <laughs> she, well, she really got spread out, man. <laughs> yeah, she, how, how exactly does that? Who? Some, like somebody had to purposefully do that. Like, or you know what? I'm going to take Arden's leg and put it in my basement. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, if she was standing somewhere, you know, like as at, in a town square and there was a huge explosion, she could have blown all over the place. Yeah, that's crazy you know? to think about what would make her explode. I mean, and look how far that is, too. Like, we think, like, this is the base down here, right? This is the one. Right. Yeah. Mm. It stands I mean, to reason, though, because that other blue circle there is where we found her, right. her arm. So over here, yeah, right, uh, yeah, over right here. <laughs> no, no. Oh, we found, yeah, we found it in our secret uh, entrance. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. So right. John, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go peep into the hole. Into the hole? You're already down the hole. I mean, the one that has the webbing in it. You said you had webbing and stuff like that. That, in there. that was the hole you were looking in. Oh, okay. You're, I, you're thought, I thought it was another. I thought okay. there was another hole. So. No, you're you're now down oh. in the cellar in the ruins of the cellar. Yeah, um, no, the, I, we're in the ruins of the cellar. I want to peep down into the hole in the floor of the cellar. No, there is no. Is there one? There is no. Yeah. You were up at the top. There's I'm a hole so that confused. led to the cellar. There's a single hole on the ground level yeah. that leads down to the cellar. Which you now just we're all down. in a cellar looking at each other. I'm sorry. I thought there was a cellar and then another hole leading into the cellar. I, Not yet. I apologize. Not, right. yet. Yeah. Not yet. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> John, I would like to look around for an exit. <laughs> Yeah, so, exactly. There's got to be something down here. Uh, first of all, you see that the uh, the subjects of the statues, one of them is uh, Horus, actually, the god Horus, uh, with the eagle head. He's mm-hmm. standing in a triumphant pose. The other one is of um, U- Uriel Naeus, who is the founder of the Order of Thoth, which is not, uh, the, not, not the part of the Church of Thoth. It's actually one of the collegia of the, um, the collegia of arcane mages from way back in the day. The third is actually a little bit smaller and is of a uh, un... Like, you recognize those those two as historical figures, but the third is actually a finely dressed goblin. Oh. Like a noble goblin. 
in robes. Um, I love him forever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you are in an actual built space. It's just choked with rubble from up above that has fallen in. There's vegetation in the light, but it's um, basically barren, uh, barren uh, as far as vegetation goes beyond that light. Okay, but it is described as, you know, like a like a square cellar. It's just it's just sort of choked with stuff. Although it gets more spread out and not as um, choked at the further away from the hole you get. Right, understandably. Mm-hmm. So you can see walls. So is it like a stone walls? Twenty by twenty cellar? Roughly, or? yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there must be a door or other kind of entrance down here for Isocritus to come through. And and there's no tracks down here either, right, John? Like the well, Garn, you're looking no- and you don't see tracks. However, when you are looking like that, you do see mm-hmm. that um, uh, looks like a path has been cleared of rubble. Okay, right? that leads okay. towards towards okay. the east, toward the eastern wall. Okay. I'm going to stalk very carefully that way down the path. Okay. And I'm going to be looking for any kind of like trip wires or anything like that along there. Right. You don't see any trip wires. However, you do see in the uh, northeastern corner, you see a large mass of bulging web. Now you're heading directly east towards the the eastern wall, which is where the path goes. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, up in the in this webbing looks relatively recent, right? Like it's glistening. What do you bit. guys think? Purge it with fire? Should we purge this web with fire? It's not moving. I don't care. <laughs> it's probably the wrapped up donkey. No, he said that bits of donkey were still up there. Oh yeah. So um, purge maybe. it with fire. I think. I mean, well. So, we, there were four of them last night, so they, four of them might rush out. So as long as we, like, position ourselves carefully. Okay. Um, I, I'll do the honors. If uh, you guys get into a defensive position, I will go up there with a torch. All right. All right. Shields up. Fire it. John, I'll if light. I think I can light the web by throwing the torch in there, then I will do that. You know what I'm saying? Rather than walking right up to it. You just want to hurl one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, mark off a torch. Gladly, best torch ever. Uh, uh, so we're taking the uh, stealthy approach in. Is uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to sneak up on a spider, bro? No, well, no, no, no I, I'm not. It's not the spiders I'm talking about, but that's fine. By everything that you're you're viewing right now, like you're in like a pretty enclosed space, right? Like it doesn't. Yeah. Have, okay. Yeah. So, but so you stand back and then you toss the torch and it hits the um, the webbing and it immediately lights up. <laughs> Place starts to fill with smoke. Um, immediately starts to vent out the hole, of course, but it does get a little bit choky. But you see, as it burns, uh, almost immediately you see thousands of tiny, like, flee out in every direction. Um, on fire. They flee out on fire. They right? do. They yeah. They, they, yeah. A lot of baby spiders um, are immediately go wisping up in smoke. Um, these are baby spiders. So they're basically a uh, baby giant spiders. So they're like, normal size spiders right um and they is go, there a can of raid in the bag it's it's bad news you um yeah and, and nothing that can hurt you guys right like they yeah. they you know but um but they they go in every direction like all over you all over you know it's very much like like that first scene in raised the lost dark where he's like turn around you know uh, <laughs> why does it have to be spiders <laughs> yeah, i always exactly. think about oh. arachnophobia you yeah. gotta know john this is especially triggering for me because i'm in this like basement <laughs> But we find haunting big spiders like all the time. Ooh, like, that's no good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask you about that one behind you on the wall there. Yeah. Seriously. If you see one, <laughs> please let me know. That's fucked up. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But eventually, like, they all skitter out and they basically, uh, because of the fire, they probably, I would assume, probably crawl up the hole and out and outwards into the, into yeah, the setting. No, so. no oh mommies and daddies God. coming out. No big guys come out. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, that- they're they're fine with it. They don't care. No. Okay. And the path does not go to this alcove, correct? It does not. No. No. It heads. It, the path leads directly to the middle of the eastern wall and ends. Okay. So I just, right. I do want to point out, guys, that that those spiders last time had some really good loot. So do we want to stick our heads in this alcove and figure that out? 
Is yeah, uh, is is there like how big is this alcove that the web thing was? Well, in? It's not really an alcove. Like it's basically at the northeast corner of the room, just oh, like okay. up up in the corner near the ceiling. Like the whole thing was just like a big. Oh, mass it was like of, a big egg sack. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. Uh, does it look like there's any? Does it look like there's any place there, like in a corner or something, that we could where stuff could be hidden? Yeah. Uh, it, once that burns out, does it leave behind like a evidence of something? Uh, yes. So. Uh, if you take the time and you wait, you can see that behind that mass, there is um, like a, a huge chunk of the uh, masonry has actually been either collapsed or or fallen apart or something like that. And it leads like, and this is up in the like in the ceiling, right? Like like closer to up, like ten feet up, right? There's a huge gaping hole that is um, that leads backwards into darkness, but it looks completely natural, like not carved, right? You understand what I'm saying? Like it goes into the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where the spy. That's where mom and dad are in the in the hole. Can, you don't think they would still? Um, you don't think they would have like, come out when their babies were on fire? Oh, it's fire. Why would they come out? Maybe. Well, here's what I'm thinking: if that torch you threw should still be burning, you could pick that up and huck it into that hole and see what happens. I'd have to get pretty close to it to pick it up. Can I just light yeah. another torch? <laughs> John, I let another torch. Right I, I wait. I, I take a torch out of the bag for you. Here you go. Just just throw it right into yeah. that hole. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it right into the hole. A lit torch into that hole. Oh, okay. and that's where the spell book burns up. No. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Better the spell book than my character sheet. Okay, as you as you huck it in. Uh, you, you see like the, you, you see, you can hear it and see it hit like back, back down there. Um, and Mm -hmm. you can see like a little bloom of light a little bit, you know, like nothing explodes or anything like that, but you can see like light sort of flickering in that darkness. Um, and then you hear a hiss and then you hear like another hiss. All right. Um, and, uh, you can hear like a, and then two large, massive, uh, arachnid claws like sort of clasp the outside of the hole and then uh, you can see it like tense as like it pulls a bulk forward oh. um, as uh, as uh, eight gleaming eyes uh, in the in the torch that's down at the, at the base like the first one that you threw like mm-hmm. you know, it like reflects off the eyes right and then like dripping fangs as it pulls itself forward and then like its jaws just open up and uh, if if uh, Arachnoids could show emotion. You could see fury and anger on his jaws um, as it I, pulls I its point at the dwarf. In. Yeah. What up, Shalab? How you doing, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we brought a barbarian with a two-handed sword, and this is kind of what they are made for. <laughs> uh, let's uh, roll for some initiative. Well, e- no! e- uh, we is, failed. <laughs> uh, oh, first of all, Everest, what spells did you memorize? Oh, uh, today I have uh, I have protection lights. from spider. I have uh, <laughs> kill all spiders. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, light, uh, cure light wounds, silence, and hold person. Okay, are you casting a spell? I am not. Okay, no one is in melee at this point. Let's roll for initiative. Okay, uh, who's doing it? Uh, I think Mike, you threw that torch. I guess one's on you, pal. Yep, that's oh, you, three. Bubba, dude. A three. I okay, three. I got a three. Roll again. You're a bastard. I never win when we have to roll off. <laughs> a one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a one. I got one too. Oh, you hey. oh, wow. We're still alive. Go ahead. I think this is this this has happened to us before. A two. A two. Okay, you can only go up from there. Things are looking up. Hey, I got a one. Oh, hey. Hey. Oh, well done. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, victory. I don't even care if I die now. I beat John at initiative. Okay, so um, (laughs) Gorin is the one that is in front uh, and is also the one that torched its babies. So um, uh, what it's going to do is basically um, uh, you can see it's tensing. Like it's like half of its body is out, right? Like its huge abdomen is still like clogging up the back of the, you know, but it's using its legs and you can see it tense. And you know that it's not going to simply crawl down and attack. It's about to like leap bodily upon Gorin. Ooh, All right, gross. your guy's turn. Go for it. What are you going to do? I'm going to set my spear for a charge. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. nice. Claw him. All right, the rest of you? Um, Yost, of course, 
whips out the old two-handed sword and immediately uh, moves up to stand at Goran's side because cleaving of spiders is what it is all about as far as barbarians are concerned. Okay. Uh, and um, Mortis will uh, draw the pin and uh, move to flank. Okay. Even though that's not technically a thing, he's still doing it because that's what legionnaires do. All right. Um, uh, Nial is going to uh, draw forth his magical battle axe, uh, take up position uh, kind of, uh, uh, over by Mort. He'll, he'll uh, back up Mort. Okay, he comes, good. Uh, you guys want initiative, you know, it's like your turn now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just telling you what he, he's going to yeah. attack. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, uh, anyone with missile weapons can fire yeah. missile weapons, right? Yeah, Avarisos is going to uh, uh, let loose with uh, uh, Shrieker. Shrieker, all right. Wee. All right. And I should point out that Tresty never actually gave Mort back his short bow, so <laughs> she's got his short bow. Oh, well, <laughs> so it, she can use that. we could definitely wreck on that. You can have you can have your short bow. No, I don't, have, I don't want to carry anymore because I got too much other stuff, so no. that's fine. Okay, what does Samantha do? What does Sam do, Mike? Uh, she is. Um, she does not have a missile weapon, which is a shame because her dex is amazing. She has the man weeper though. She does, but she can't throw that. Like I'm not worried about her going to combat. I'm worried about she can't do anything now. Do you want her to brace? With yeah, you? I think that's a great idea. Yep. So she'll brace for a charge. Okay. All right. So uh, so Avaricios, go for it. All right. Uh, okay. So this is. Uh, uh, he has a minus one, uh, but he, the, but Shrieker's a plus two weapon, uh, so he's got a plus one to hit. Okay, AC is twelve. Okay, uh, come on, there we go. Rolling. Oh, that's a thirteen. That's a hit. That's going to hit. Um, his damage die is now because he's level five. It is a D eight. Yes. Oh uh, snap. So- a uh, one d eight plus a two for Shrieker. Uh, okay, well that's a one, but uh, three points of damage. Three points of damage. Okay, so with a with a high pitched wail that you know is like very very loud, probably be, be able to hear up up above as well. But uh, you whip a stone uh, directly into one of its eyes, and it splutes out, and it, and it, sh- sh- it shrieks out, it shrieks in pain. <laughs> Uh, any other missiles? No other missiles, right? Uh, we have Gorn and Tresty. Sam are waiting. Tresty. Oh, Trusty, right. Uh, Trusty has a crossbow. Um, I'm going to say that she actually didn't have it ready, so she's going to go very last in the round. Okay. Slow. Okay. Okay. So. All right, John, bring that horribleness. So Gorn is set for a charge. So is Sam. Sam is set for a charge. So is Sam. So that means uh, everybody else can make an attack. Right. Y'all can attack Mort and, so, and Yost. Yost. All right. Um, how about I do Yost here? Uh, he will roll his 20 sided die. Let's see if I can make this thing work. There we go. And he adds. Ooh. Okay. Yost uh, finds that he has difficulty using a two handed sword in such close quarters, evidently. It happens. That is a five. And his plus three to hit does not overcome that minor. Okay. How about more? You have rolling five. Um, Mort will leap into the fray. This is the pin's inaugural attack. Come on, pin. Ooh, okay. So the pin is plus, plus one. Three. Plus three. Plus three. Dude. Plus three. Plus one to dex. Sorry. Uh, so that is a total of a 15, John. That'll do it. Nice. Um... So let me clear that 20 sign die, and Mort will roll a D6 for damage. Oh, yeah. Nice. He will add two points to that for strength. And three for the pin. And three for the pin, putting me at 11 points of damage. Wow. Okay. Nice. And isn't it slowed? And the spider is now slowed. It's very slow because it's dead. Uh, Oh. oh, oh. Oh. Mort, yeah, you... uh, Yeah, you le- you leap forward into it, and you just basically uh, the dagger just slips right in under into its jaws, and it just collapses, and uh, the bulk of it just sort of f- flops out uh, uh, onto the ground. Uh, Goblins hate spiders. Uh, deadly. Does this look like one of the spiders that attacked us? Yes. Or is it bigger? It's the same size. 
big red okay. fat abdomen. Um, nice. And uh, venom leaks out of its uh, uh, out of its gaping jaws on the ground. Ooh, get yourself a vial out of the bag and pick that shit up. It does like one of those like awful like um, uh, twitching legs up, you know, like, <laughs> and then it goes still. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So, uh, does, does, well, first we should pull it out and make sure there's not another one behind it. There yeah. were four last night. Yeah, I want to see what's in that hole. So yeah, yeah. let's let's uh, take a peek up inside the hole. And see if there's more spiders. Okay. And kill those if there are. There does not and appear to be. Treasure. Um, can we see the torch down in there? Is it? Can we see like a bunch of treasure and vast sums of wealth? Where, are you climbing up there? Yeah, mortal climb up there. Okay, mortal. He's feeling he's feeling his oats now. You see, he's like, ah, I can kill a spider. Yeah. I'm going. Okay. Nice knowing so you, Mark. It's like slimy and webbed, like in there, right? It's dark. You can see, yeah. um, and but you can see, like about um, about five feet in, there is the uh, the torch. Actually, that's probably that was probably snuffed. I would think by its movement across it, um, uh, the torch. So it's like completely completely dark in there. Um, the residual lantern light from Avaricios down below, uh, mm. uh, however, uh, glints off. Deep in the tunnel, about 15 feet away, eight lights. Those are eyes. I dropped down. We we fret fully. (laughs) (laughs) I I dropped back down fast. Uh, You you may actually be surprised. I need you to make um, a uh, D6 roll, please. I don't like it. No, sir. I don't like it. Oh, yeah. I rolled a one. <laughs> All right. So sometimes ones are good. How can I be surprised? I was expecting a spider. Oh, fire. Well, yeah, the, but you can expect a jump scare in a movie and it still scares you. I know. Yeah. So oh. you, so it glints off of it. And the moment that you register that there are, that, that, that they are there, the thing just like bolts forward, um, uh, like okay. lightning quick. Um, uh, okay, so what is your AC? Well, uh, can I use my shield? You certainly cannot. Oh, so 17. 17, all right. Whoa, that's I pretty good, man. 17, man. High dex and good armor and a magic dagger that increases your dex by one. That's pretty sweet. Oh, I rolled a 19 on the die. Oh. Mm. Okay. Um, can we retcon this? Is it, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mort, you're going to take oh, five okay. points of damage. And okay. uh, you're going to take oh. five points as uh, as his jaws like just race right into you, just whoosh, and clamp down. You can feel poison enter your bloodstream, lightning quick. I need you to make me a save versus poison. You get a plus two bonus to this roll. Come Ted, on, believe me when you... I say you want to make this roll. Oh my oh, god, god you want to... <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> you, get a, poison. you get a plus two bonus. Okay. Uh I have a 14 and my save is an eight. So Oh I mean, nice. You got some some of that dwarven resistance in you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ouch. so you can feel it. You can feel it into the bloodstream, but you're goblin tough. Um Goblin it, tough. It does not affect you. I'm getting uh, that as a tattoo. But you've got this okay. thing like on you, right? And its bulk like basically takes up the entire width of the of the uh, thing that you're on right now. You cannot, you can, you can hunch, right? Uh, basically, what I'm going to say, Ted, is that you're not prone, but it is tight quarters. I'm going to say that you're at a yeah. minus two while you are to to hit and damage while you are in this um, pocket up there. Okay. Uh, okay. Now. Uh, everyone roll for initiative, please. Who's rolling? Matt, you're I up think, this time. Uh, okay. Ted, you don't want to do it? I mean, you're... I mean, the burden is a bit on me, I think. I, it's I fair. Think, yeah, so. I don't want to have that on me. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 jeez. Oh, jeez. I mean, yes, one, I, roll. I, I rolled a six. Uh, ah. so, uh, all right, so you guys have to declare your actions. Let's start with Ted. What do you, what do you plan to do? So fortunately, the spider's mouth is full, and he oh. can't actually attack. Uh, 
Uh, no, on, not uh, no, of course not. But uh, I should have actually <laughs> oh, well. before initiative was rolled, I should have asked if you wanted to um, do a full retreat, which happens before initiative. Um, if you do, it gets a plus one to attack you. Uh, Your AC okay, is pretty so high. If I don't say full retreat, then I'm in melee. If I do say full retreat, then he gets his basically his attack at a plus one, but I'm out of melee. Yeah, now you can you can do a that. fighting withdrawal if you want, but that doesn't have to be declared before before initiative. So yeah, he's going to fight withdrawal. He doesn't. Yeah. Um, okay, he doesn't want to go down without swinging. Right. I so mean, you, also, you, John, logistically, he would need to retreat for us to be able to do anything, right? Like, that's correct. Like, like he's ten feet up, up, right? He's ten yeah. feet up. Like you can, you guys cannot even. You don't have a target up there. You just hear awfulness happening, and then you would also need to take time to actually get up to where Mort is. Right. So, what do you what do you guys plan to do? I'm going to listen to his Wilhelm scream. <laughs> I think it's probably more of a stuck pig squeal. I suspect at this I, point. I guess I'm going to brace for a charge again, and so is Sam. Okay. I'm hoping that it comes out of the hole. Sans Mort. How about Yost and um, uh, Trusty? Well, I, I'll I'll do Trusty. Um, but what is what is Yost going to do? Um. Yost uh, and y'all and y'all. I need to know what y'all does. Yeah. Wait. Yost only has a sword, so he uh, does he come up there and grab your feet, and haul you out. I think, yeah, he's going to come up and try and pull uh, pull Mort down. Okay. And y'all. Um, yeah, and y'all is going to uh, like wait by the uh, wait by the hole. If any spider comes out, he's going to chop it. Okay. And uh, Avaricios will have his uh, uh, sling ready to whip it. Okay. Uh, whip it good. The spider <laughs> is uh, has the initiative. So, uh, well, Trusty is going to yeah. um, basically load her crossplay. She's going to, she'll, she'll have it ready. Um, so uh, she won't have to, it won't be slow the next time she can attack. It'll be ready to go. And she has it aiming at the hole as well. Um, in the meantime, though, the spider uh, chomps down once again on Mort. Here we go. Go bad. I rolled bad. Yes. I rolled a th I rolled a three, Mort. As you are uh, desperately trying to disengage from its jaws, it cannot seem to find purchase as its uh, legs are scrabbling at you. Uh, is that all it gets? Is the one it is? That's the only one. Luckily for you. Okay. Um, what do you guys want to do? Go for it. So I will stab it, and like as I'm pushing away from that hole, you know, I stab it and just fall back into Yost's loving arms. <laughs> okay. Go for it. AC twelve. Oh, oh no, nah, it's a miss. That's I rolled a two. Too. Not right. going to so do it. So I just it. get down off the hole. Okay, yeah, but you, yeah, you fall back out. I'm not going to say you take any damage. You manage to retreat in good order, and you hop back down as it uh, scuttles forward, um, hissing at you, venom dripping once again. Um, so I want basically Yost to kind of grab him and pull him out of the way of combat, so that like Gorin and everybody else can get in there and do their thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, it already attacked. So you guys aren't going to be able to get any uh, attacks going this round. So now we're going to. Well, first of all, um, uh, any spells being cast by Verusios? No. Okay. Then let's roll for initiative again. Okay. I got Who's a up? five. Who's rolling? Uh, I'll do it. I, I can beat a five. Okay. I'm sure of it. Here we go. This is how you do that. I like the confidence. Boom. Uh, well, it's uh, a two. That's a two. <laughs> oh, well. I, how many of these do I get to roll? Can I roll a few more? <laughs> All right. Um, uh, declare your actions. You're going to brace, I assume. Oh, that's right. uh, yes, I will brace because there's no target still, right? There's no no one to attack. Yeah, no one to attack. Still up in the hole, yeah. Uh, Yost will, is going to pull more out of the way. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Nyal yeah. is going to chop it with an axe, and Avarisos is going to bean it with a. Uh, 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 shrieker shrieker okay oh. and trusty will fire her crossbow which will not be slow this round because she has it readied um the uh, spider emerges once again fast this time like the second one like it like just has its claws out and it's just going to leap forward and i think it's just going to randomly uh try to get with the first person that it sees so let's roll randomly since you're all raid before it that is seven of you correct yeah okay we'll do one to four is um you guys in uh, well, one to three is you guys, and then four through seven will be the NPCs. Uh, let's see, where's my eight sider? I got a seven, so that is going uh -oh. to be Tresty. Um, no, I was yep. getting to Tresty, man. She way in the back. Hmm? I was uh, getting to Tresty. She way in the back. Eight elves. Uh, it can. Uh, 
Leap. Can it leap? Actually, it can't. Ah! She got to get to, mm. he got to get to all of us to get to her. She waited yeah. back. Well, you know what? It can actually, it can't leap, but what it can do is it can cling. So what I'm going to say it does is it actually, um, it, it splays its fingers out and crawls out of the hole. And then what it's going to do is it actually goes up under the ceiling and it goes and then just drops straight down oh, on, on oh, Tresty. No. Well, uh, you've got this, Tresty. Don't worry. Holy oh. shit! It missed Tresty. I rolled a six. <laughs> hey. So uh, she, she she's just like tracking it with her crossbow. She's like shit, 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 shit. And she's like dodges out of the way as it like drops down on. Um, and now it's like it's like right. Um, it's all behind you guys. You guys all have to like kind of whirl around. Um, as it's like planted itself right on the ground before you. So it's in between you and Tresty, but all of you guys have to turn around. Mm. Okay. Okay. Go for it. I want right. to charge it. Uh, does it wait to do, do missiles go first? Missiles first, first yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he'll do, uh, he'll let go with Shrieker. And actually, Shrieker should be a plus three because um, I forgot my, uh, my plus two from level five, plus two from Shrieker, minus one for his uh, text. Don't forget short range too, so you get a plus one. Oh, okay. Uh, Sweet. There we go. Plus four to hit. Come on, come on, come on. D20. Uh, oh, that's... Uh, I Palpable. rolled a 17. Palpable. Nice. Very nice. Uh, this is a D8 plus two. Nice. <laughs> Another <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> Three points. Yeah, you beat it again, and it cracks inside of its head um, as it whirls around hissing at you. Okay, that was missiles uh, uh, melee. I'd like to charge it. Okay, go into fourteen total. Nice. Hit. Love him. And I roll a d10. Don't Ooh. say that out loud. Nine plus uh, one for the spear, so ten points. Ten points. All right. So uh, Avaricio's distractions with its with its uh, sling stone as it whirls its head towards him, and then Gorin takes advantage, runs up, and just guts it from underneath. Nice. Whack, and it collapses on the ground, dead. Sweet. Nicely done. You've got two dead spiders at your feet. Wow, you guys are you guys ain't fucking around now. <laughs> I think it's the first time we've actually <laughs> tested like your new higher combat tiers stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. it's just no joke. Hey, Mort, uh, want to go back to the hall, see if there are any more? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why don't, why don't we do our little uh, our little rat tr- rat on this string trick? He's probably running around there somewhere. Do the uh, chicken, oh. dude. It's a little bit bigger target for that. I'm, I'm so glad you made that saving throw dead. <laughs> <laughs> so glad. <laughs> Me all right, too. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, pull a chicken out of the bag this time. And uh, okay, like football the chicken into the spider. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, you can't you can't tell if it's being eaten or not because it's just clucking in there really madly. You, you got to just tie a string to its leg first. I mean, we would. Uh, I think we would see like feathers kind of. No, you. you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you don't. It don't. You just hear it. You you hear it happily clucking around in the darkness. Happily? Right. Wow, that's a brave chicken. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, John, just, you know, we've been like focused on this one hole. There aren't any other holes in this room, are there? That we uh, look around. Nope, doesn't appear to be. Just okay. tons of rubble. And don't forget that the path, you're kind of away from the path now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I probably should have given you guys penalties for moving around and stuff because there's so much rubble in your way. But the path leads directly to the middle of the eastern wall. All of this took place in that northeastern corner and a hole up in the big hole up in the top. Um, so I wasn't going to say that the two combats took away two turns, just so you know. Uh, anyways, yeah, the chicken is clucking in the darkness. All right. This time, this time, the goblin's going to get up there and, and he's going to see what's in the hole. <laughs> Mort, not swayed Mort, at all. He's like, all right. Not swayed at all, not afraid of spiders. <laughs> goblin uh, hates spiders. He wants to go up there and kill some more spiders. He's going to climb back up that hole. Well, this time right. with a torch. <laughs> okay. And uh, this uh, time with the torch. This time, like, stick the torch in, but not his face, you know. And uh, <laughs> right, right. This time, the, the 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 light, the faint light of your torch, glints off of two eyes. 
It's a chicken. It's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's a chicken attack, Joe. That's just <laughs> right. That chicken attacks. I swear, if I have to make a saving throw versus poison, man, I want to know what's in that sack. <laughs> saving right. throw versus nuggets. Uh, so no, no but, spiders in there? But since you have a... No, no spiders. The, the chicken bark, bark, boxing goes goes past you um, back into Avarisius' waiting arms. Uh, but um, uh, because you have an actual light source in the hole now, you can see it actually glint off um, uh, some wet... Uh, strands of webbing but that is also faintly that is a um not not concealing well a, a large mound of well actually i shouldn't say that we're going to roll randomly but possibly a large amount of treasure yes i like spiders yeah. i like spiders <laughs> uh okay There's so two more though this is very concerning where are the other two we're doing a classic um uh, bx uh, random treasure type roll to see if shit exists and it's not a high chance so there's very well you may not actually find anything in the spider webs so let's find out more you get to do the honors um you're gonna roll okay. you're gonna be rolling me d percentile here okay okay go ahead and roll 18. okay oh, roll, good. roll again I think in these charts, Matt hires better. No, 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 no. No. Oh, 69, uh, dude. <laughs> roll, roll again. Uh, clear that one. Hot five. Wow. A five? Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ted. Roll again. Yeah. Oh, nice. I don't believe that. Yeah, no, they're, it low is good on these charts. Uh, 15. Okay, you find 15 gold pieces. Oh. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll again. That's it. After all that dice rolling. I roll okay. again. Yep. Yeah. Uh, four. Uh, roll, me a, roll me a D four. Three. Okay. One second. You find three spiders. I can't believe you actually. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, Is there anyone else here like a thumping? It sounds like somebody's knee is banging against their desk. It, it might something. be me. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. I hear uh, it, but it's not me. I know that. Uh, what'd you get? Three? Okay, roll me a d20. Yeah. Okay, d20. Ten. Ten? Okay, you find one gem, which will determine what it is uh, later, but one gem is worth 100 GP. There we go. Roll again. That'll just cover my uh, poison and facial reconstruction. Roll percentile again. Or uh, d20. D20. 12. Another 100 GP gem. Ooh. Okay. And uh, one more time. D20? Yep. Six. And a 50 GP gem. Where is All right, it so can... 265 GP. Can you hear that too? It's not just yeah. me. I'm not listening. Yeah, it is what it is. I do hear a thump. Okay, um, roll D percentile again. 90. Okay, and one last time. 74. Okay, you just find those three gems and the 15 pieces of gold. All right. Which is actually way more than I actually thought you were going to get because those chances were not high. So nice, yeah. nicely done. Uh, and uh, no other exits out of this tunnel. No. No. Just appears to be yeah, like it's it just a natural dug. You know. Okay. Spidey hole. He'll climb back down and look what I got, guys. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, it's concerning that, though, man. Where are these other two spiders? I don't like them being around somewhere. Well, uh, I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, they could be out hunting. It's top true. side. Yeah, that's true. Um, or Isocritus uh, is so good at his job that he actually makes friends with giant spiders and they're following him around like a couple of guard dogs. No, that'd be awesome. All right. We should go check out where the, the cleared pathway ends at that wall. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right near it, right? Right. Like this, yeah. um, so you just kind of back away a little bit from the uh, from the northeastern hole there up in there, um, and yeah, so there, it just appears to end right at like a section of wall, right? Yeah, um, can okay. I just make the recommendation that while we are searching the area type thing, <coughs> all the NPCs are 
facing the other direction and waiting for someone to sneak up on us kind of thing. Right. It's, That's fine. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. All right. So I'm going to go and try and figure out if there's some sort of construction trick, John, I'm going to look for um, tiny keyholes that are built into the wall. I'm going to look for um, switches or false panels on the wall. Um, cool. Poking and prodding. Yeah. So you take a, um, uh, well, let's say, uh, first of all, that um, Mort's scavenger find took a turn. And then you take another turn to uh, look at the wall, Gorn, like really carefully. And indeed, you do find uh, that uh, there is a panel at about, uh, about chest high that appears to be a lot more clean than the other like stone panels that, that form the, 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 uh, the stone blocks that form the, the wall of the cellar. Okay. I'm going to tap it gently with the haft of my spear and see if it's hollow or if it moves. Uh, it does appear that it is um, somehow that it actually does. It is able to shift like to the right. Okay. Um, all right. I put my hand on it and try and shift it to the right. Okay. It moves easily to the right. And as you do so, uh, the section of wall in a door shaped fashion directly to the left of that panel just goes silently, just goes and opens inwards into darkness. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, shortly uh, as Everest, as light is over your shoulder, Goran, uh, illuminating what's beyond about five feet beyond that. There is a, uh, a stone spiral staircase that leads down. Yes. 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 I, I shake my head at this shoddy human construction. <laughs> yeah, that was really easy to find, man. Yeah. Boy. Any, any dwarven child could have done better. On that. <laughs> um, all right. I look around my shoulder, over my shoulder at everybody and say, who's ready for the fun part? Let's get them, boys. <laughs> Okay. Work will uh, will kind of wipe uh, the uh, seeping, uh, superating wounds of his face and say, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm super ready for this." Uh, yeah, exciting! <laughs> great way to great way to start the day. Excitement. Okay, right. I'm gonna. I'll start down the uh, the, the staircase. Um, I don't mind leading. Okay, so let me just uh, get a thing up here on Albert because it's time to get back to the dungeon, boys. Oh yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Loading, reticulating splines. And Yay. let's get that puppy back up so the viewers can see it. Ted, I want you to. Let's see. Where am I going to. I'm going to have you drop. Uh, all right. Keep an eye for my pointer here, Ted. I see a pointer. Yeah. Oh no, that's Goran. Where uh, is your pointer? Hold on. I haven't done it. Out. I haven't done it yet. But uh, oh well, that would that would explain why I didn't see it. You're gonna oh want to. What is that sound? I don't know. That's crazy. Okay, so you're gonna do it. Okay. Right around here-ish. Okay. Sound I'm good. With you. All right. You got it. What okay. is the diameter of the spiral staircase? That does not matter. Uh, so you're going to oh, go okay. down. The spiral staircase goes down and down and down, and it goes down for about 225 feet. Yikes. Way down. Is it um, only wide enough for one person? Yeah, pretty much, yep. Okay. Uh, ancient stone. Is it stone. dusty? Uh, no, it's not dusty, actually. Let's look, it's been well-traveled. Well and um, uh, But there's no graffiti on the walls or anything like that. It looks like it's it's been trod recently, but but not by a, like a lot of different people, right? Um, trodden, whatever. Goes down for 225 feet, which takes you about another six turns, I'm gonna say. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you debouche. Hold on, I think I know what the sound is. Matt, were you just typing? I was, but uh, it, it doesn't seem to correspond. It sounds too mechanical, man. It's, it's that, 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 you know, it doesn't sound like someone typing. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Not a big deal. Right. Just focus, focus on other things. Focus on the game. Come on, guys. Okay. All right. So you, uh, you, it ends up flattening out into like a rough natural section of stone, uh, at the base of this 225 feet that basically heads directly south, 
um, for about 30 feet. Okay. So a rough stone corridor at the bottom of the staircase. Uh, yeah, that goes about 30 feet. Um, Is it and, a 10 foot wide corridor? Huh? Yeah, 10 foot 10 wide. 10 foot yeah. wide? Yeah, yeah. Uh, r- roughly, right? It's like, it's like natural stone. Um, uh, let's see. So you can see that it ends in a wall, all right, uh, that is actually built. And it's very easy to see that, uh, like, from this from this part of it, from, the, from this side of it, that it was intended to be like a secret door, but that you're meant to find it from this side, right? Like it, like the, like it, like the natural stone just basically like hits up against like the, like a, an obvious, like built uh, piece of stone. Um, but you can like see hard like, to find from the other direction. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. could totally see it from this side. Yeah. I mean, it's very easy to see like the outline of the door. Okay. Interesting. Um, I'm going to go listen at that door. Okay. You spend a turn listening. Uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, okay. For some reason, my die roller won't come up. Can someone roll a six sided for me and get a one or a two? Oh, never mind. It popped up. Um, dupe. Dupe. Never mind. Okay. You rolled a six. <laughs> totally so you... safe, guys. Totally safe. Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, you don't hear anything. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I um, try and trigger the door, I guess. Yeah. Is it like got an obvious like big lever on this side or something? Like, so there doesn't seem to be like a lever of any sort, but you can easily see like the seam of the door. Okay. Like the seam, uh, seam of, of like a door, you know, like a rectangle shape in the in the wall. I push gently on it, John, and see if it just swings open. Uh. So, yeah, uh, it does actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I would say it actually swings. You have to kind of pull it towards you, right? Okay. So it swings into the into the natural storm corridor. So I, I'm going to pull it open just a crack enough to see if there's any light on the other side. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I don't think there is. Let me just double check. No, there's no light. It's dark beyond. Okay. Um while they have the light source behind me, I'm going to stick my head through the door and I'm going to look around with my infravision and see if I see any heat sources. Yeah, when I see him opening the door like that, since I, I kind of get that, I'm going to like shield the light so that's not shining. Okay, gotcha. Um, Gordon, you don't see any light sources. Okay. Um, open the door and uh, and then tell them to turn on the light, you know, like okay. gesture for the light. Okay, every so your light uh, lights up a very large room. Um, in fact, it's so large that you can't see the borders of it with your thirty foot radius. Um, you appear to be coming in the the direct middle of the northern wall of this room. Okay, and okay. it it extends, th- uh, you know, thirty feet beyond you. Actually, I would say no. That's not okay. So you would be able to see the ends of of, of certain. Okay, so, um, so as you peer at the light, in, you are coming in directly in the middle of the northern wall. The light okay. extends thirty feet to the west, and then also thirty feet to the east. So the entire east-west direction is actually seventy feet. Do you understand? Like you're you're Got you're it. in the you're in the middle one, right? Yep. Um, and then it also extends 30 feet to the south as well, although you cannot see the far wall to the south. Can we see walls on either side then? Uh, yes, you can. On the eastern and western side, you can see walls. Okay. 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 Now, the uh, it is obviously like a built room. It's not natural. And you can immediately tell that this is a grand laboratory of some sort yeah. yeah uh actually let me roll a thing here real quick okay um it is crammed with stuff uh let's see what can you actually see yeah there, so there you is see me stealing a bunch of stuff out of here is what i can see there appear to be multiple tables you can see the ends of them actually at the edge of your lantern light as well, Avaricio. It's like there's more beyond like your lantern light to the south. 
Um, you can see the hints of what appears to be a uh, in the south southwestern area of the room. There's just a faint outline of an eight foot tall stone statue of a human that is clad in a kilt, um, wearing a Thothian headdress and carrying a spear. Right, um, and uh, there are uh, the tables themselves have all sorts of clutter on them, like. Like, uh, there appears to be like a mummified baboon paw, uh, paw, a huge calcified egg, feathers, um, weird geolog geological specimens like geodes and things like that, colored sands and beakers, jars with all sorts of strange liquids, some of them with objects actually floating around inside them. Um, and there is just a massive amount, like almost too much to, to, to carry out. Um, just all sorts of weird weird stuff like much stranger than like Blondvig's like little tiny little laboratory that he had right it's like just a phantasmagoria of of um of cool shit everywhere however you take this nice. in with a sweep of your lantern Avaricios and Gorn as you sort of step into the room um and you you see that the hint of that statue beyond and then it steps into the light it actually oh, goes shit. and it animates smoothly almost as if it's actually like alive Although you know it was a statue, right? Um, and it uh, it kind of swivels its head uh, around at you, and it stops, and it like brings its spear to bear, and then it starts to run at you. Oh, hold uh, up your symbol! Hold up your symbol! Yeah, we hold up our symbols of Thoth. Um, holy, yeah, holy, holy, holy Thoth symbol. <laughs> uh, you and... quickly hold it up, and it, it it doesn't appear to notice that you're carrying it at all. Yeah. Okay. Do we have time uh, to retreat into the hallway? Uh, let's see. Actually, you might, uh, maybe not. Um, let's uh, roll for initiative real quick. Uh, balls. Oh, boy. Dang. Oh, uh, I did not expect uh, this. Who wants to go up against John? I'll do it right. this time. Okay. I haven't done it yet. Isn't I, it my turn? I rolled a two. Okay. Uh, I haven't done one yeah. yet, so. Okay. Here we oh, go. I thought you uh, did. Okay. Oh, I did. Okay. Ah! Uh, 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 uh. oh. oh. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Dad, you do it. <laughs> Son of a bitch! That's amazing. Uh, okay, <sighs> so it 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 charges forward at both Gar uh, Gorin and Avaricios as they're trying to scuttle back in in vain through the door. Like back, 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 back. Um, Never mind. I'm gonna give it uh, one attack, and then we're probably gonna have to end it here. I think we'll start with the the, the oh boy the, the combat proper afterwards. Um, this is yeah. Let me just check here real quick. Sorry. Um, well, next week we'll have David. Maybe he can turn invisible, fly behind it, and stab it in the neck. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, you got the cylindrical headdress, um, and the spear that it's wielding is actually different than the stone that it's uh, that it's made out of. It's actually uh, carrying a black iron spear. Like the whole thing's just like a shaft of iron, um, and it rushes forward. And I'm going to say that I'm going to roll a d6, one to three. It's attacking Gorn. Th four to six. It's attacking um, Avaricios. Avaricios, as it comes towards oh. your light. Ugh. Indeed, indeed. That's all right. I get ready to juke. <laughs> Run in a zigzag pattern, buddy. <laughs> Serpentine. <laughs> okay, one moment. Sorry. Sorry. Going to end up like uh, Donald Duck in that uh, Robin Hood one. Okay. AC? I don't ever see that reference. Uh, AC is 19. 19. Wow, that's not bad. Oh, and it misses horribly. Ever so you see it yes. coming a mile away as I rolled a five on the die. And um, yeah, you charge forward and you just basically like, you have a shield attached to that I, hook I, arm. I do, a shield on the hook arm. Yep, which you have learned to wield with efficiency and you um, and you bring it up to bear as you glance the spear aside. And you're like, what the fuck? Um, as uh, as the rest of the party uh, barrels into the room, or maybe not, maybe you guys retreat. We'll have to find out next time. <laughs> Um, as they are being attacked by some sort of animated construct of some sort that is guarding this laboratory with all of its goodies. Mm. All right, we'll leave it there. You have entered back into the halls of Ardenvul. Ever so briefly. Ever so briefly. <laughs> yeah. 
but you got the spider. I hate this place. We're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot that it's dangerous down here, but that's all right. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. That was super fun, guys. Uh, so I guess we'll pick it up again in Meteor Res with the combat, um, with the animated construct. Hopefully, hopefully you'll actually, uh, on we roll, magically appear in the corridor beyond. Oh. You can uh. magically knife it to death. Wait, maybe the statue is on we're. <laughs> what? God damn it. I, I checked my neck. <laughs> How did you know? Why <laughs> did you GM this? Uh, all right, guys, that was super fun. Don't forget, guys, everyone out there that you've been watching 3D6 down the line, don't forget to please like and subscribe. Um, hit that bell icon to get notifications whenever we put up a new episode. That'd be totally sweet. Uh, I hope everyone has a great week, and we will see you next time. Adios, everybody. Take care. See you later. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.